we just started the grueling task of cancer treatment, which is horrifying, absolutely horrifying, especially for a child, a little five-year-old. That's Kate Merrick. Her daughter, Daisy Love, was in kindergarten when doctors found a large tumor on her abdomen. One day you're going surfing with your husband on his day off, and the next minute you're in the ER with your five-year-old, and, you know, you're getting a possible death sentence. Daisy Love went to be with Jesus four years ago. Her mom, Kate, is our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. Now, this story, no question about it, it's a heartbreaking one. But Kate has some incredible wisdom about life, death, and faith that are sure to encourage you. Then Billy Graham will share what the Bible says about death. You can be sick to the glory of God. The Bible teaches that a Christian can even die to the glory of God. Is that true? Can you die to the glory of God? Find out what Billy Graham means here by going to findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. GPS. God. People. Stories. Kate Merrick lives in California. She grew up in the church but wasn't following Jesus. I was your typical high schooler, super rebellious. I'm still really rebellious in my heart, but I try and keep that in check. (laughs) So yeah, I just never knew what it was to walk with the Lord. When Kate was 19, she started dating Britt, the man who would later become her husband. Before they were married, though, both Kate and Britt were more interested in partying than in following Jesus Christ. And I remember one night at a party, beer in each hand, he looks at me kind of funny and he says, um... Would you ever want to go to a Bible study? And he was really nervous, and I looked at him, and I said, Are you a Christian? And he looks down, and he goes, Um, yeah. (laughs) And I go, Me too! (laughs) And so we started going to this Bible study. That Bible study was a very positive influence on Kate and Britt. They ended up going every week for seven years. And the Word of God became alive to me. And now we started to know Jesus and started to know what it was to walk with him. And, and little by little, he would just pierce our hearts and say, hey, this thing, this is destructive. This does not honor me. And we'd be like, whoa, okay, okay. And we just fell so in love with the Word, so in love with it. Along with that love for the Bible, God placed in Britt's heart a passion for sharing the good news of Jesus with a group of people he knew very well, surfers. God just said, hey, these kids don't know me. These kids don't know who I am. And so we started inviting all the surfer kids to his parents' house to hear about the Bible. And it was crazy because God just swooped us up out of the pit. And, um, and, you know, we definitely weren't perfect by any means, but he's like, you know enough to share. And so he, well, together we founded a family of churches called Reality. And they, it began in our little beach town, and we now have churches um, all the way to London, England. We've got one in Boston. We've got one coming in Honolulu, Hawaii. Yeah, so God's just like, hey, more people need to hear about me. You want to tell them? And we're like, yeah, we'll tell them. As the Merrick's ministry grew, so did their family. Their son, Isaiah, was born in 2000. Then four years later, their first daughter, Daisy Love, came into the world. She wanted to dress up all the time, but not like a princess. She wanted to be a dinosaur or a pirate or a bird or, you know, anything like that, a bear. Just all these crazy things, and she was always just really brave. She'd climb to the top of stuff and jump down, and I just let her. I just let her be herself, you know, just... Funky and crazy and brave. As Kate puts it, their family was hashtag blessed. But the Merricks were about to face the hardest, darkest time they had ever been through. And that time started with a phone call from Daisy's school. Daisy had fallen on the playground and was badly hurt. And Britt and I were about to go surfing because it was Monday and that's Pastor's Day Off. And that's what we do together. We go surfing. We don't, those are our dates. We don't go out to eat. We go surfing. 
So we drive back, and we're like, oh, there goes our date, you know. And we ended up in the hospital. She's vomiting. When we go to pick her up, she's vomiting. She's in and out of consciousness. After a few hours of testing, a doctor told Kate and Britt that Daisy Love had a tumor on her abdomen, and it had burst open when she fell on the playground. So she was on morphine just to deal with the pain while this tumor is spreading all over her body through her bloodstream. And so, um, you know, we left the house to go surfing. We didn't go home for 11 days or 12 days or whatever it was that we stayed in. Um, Yep, so three days later... She got surgery, got that tumor out, and um, so we just started the grueling task of cancer treatment, which is horrifying, absolutely horrifying, especially for a child, a little five-year-old. So, you know, we just launched into that life. And you just get, you know, that's the thing about suffering is one day you're going surfing with your husband on his day off, and the next minute you're in the ER with your five-year-old. And, you know, you're getting a possible death sentence. For the next eight months, Daisy Love received chemotherapy. At the end of her treatments, the scans came out clear. She was cancer-free. So the Merricks decided to celebrate. And the way they did that was taking a family vacation to Hawaii. While they were in Hawaii, though, Daisy started to feel pain in her abdomen again. So Kate and Britt took her back to the doctor when they got home. They said, I don't know how this happened because she just had a clean scan, but it's back. And then you do what's called relapse therapy, which is way more aggressive. I think maybe maybe three or so months passed next time, and then it came back again, and it came back again. And so um, we had no options at all. And he's like, well, I'm, I'm so sorry. There's nothing else I can do. The Merricks made one last-ditch effort to find a treatment that would work. They raised enough money to move to Israel to see a doctor there who specialized in experimental therapy. But a month after returning to the States, the tumor came back again, and 8-year-old Daisy Love Merrick went to be with Jesus in February of 2013. I, to this day, I mean, I will forever be astounded by her strength. She was cooperative. She was kind. You know, she was respectful to her doctors and nurses. She hated it, but she kept it together for everyone. And she was always smiling and, you know, and she was honest with me. She would whisper in my ear, you know, can you ask this person to leave if someone was frustrating her? And she'd say it quietly in my ear. Or sometimes she would say, you know, am I going to die? Or she'd say, why isn't God healing me? You know, she was honest and, and we spoke frankly about those. One of the times when they spoke frankly about death was when Daisy was seven years old. Kate found Daisy in her room, listening to the song, Lead Me to the Cross. You know that song that says, Lead Me to the Cross, where you love poured out, bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Lead me to the cross, where you love poured out. Um, She said, Mom, Mom, what do you you think this song means? And um, she said, I think I know what it means. So what do you think it means, she said. It means that if Jesus wants me to live, I'm going to live. And when he wants me to die, I'm going to die. But until then, I'm going to live. I can feel it in my bones. And when she said that, it just blew me away. (laughs) You know what? Seven-year-old says that. And lead me to the cross where you love Kate calls Daisy Love her hero for the way she handled her situation. For Britt, though, at times the situation simply became unbearably difficult. Um, When she got her third diagnosis, my husband went through a really, really, really dark time. So he didn't preach for six months and just was like in a really heavy, heavy time. But he had already committed to read his Bible every day. And I'm telling you, that's what kept him afloat is, you know, and he was angry. He's like, you don't even know the things I've said to God. And he wouldn't pray. And I remember being so scared. Like, I was as scared that my husband would lose his faith as I was scared of my daughter to die. Of course, 
Kate also had her own moments of intense grief and anger. I went through a darker time, maybe at her second diagnosis, asking why. Everything from quietly like, why, why, to, you know, screaming on your knees, why, and in the shower, and why, and while you're driving, why. Kate says she has found some comfort and peace in the book of Job. You read the entire book in all of its entirety, and it's actually really encouraging because God never gave Job the answer to his why. But he let him cry it out. And then in the end, when he's kind of got all of his wiggles out, God says from the whirlwind, hey, man, me. He never says why. He says who. And so, you know, he spends, what, two or three chapters just talking about how radical he is. And that's enough for Job. Job worships God. And it's funny because you don't get the answer why. You get the answer who, and it's strangely comforting. And I realized I don't think Job could take the why, and I don't think I could eat. And I'm okay with that. The Merricks may never know why God only gave them eight and a half years with Daisy Love, but they do know this from experience. Jesus Christ's death, resurrection, and promise of eternal life are reasons to have joy in any and every circumstance. There's so much beautiful life to have, even while you're suffering. There's so much beauty. Jesus is so much better than you ever imagined, and not to fear it, not to fear suffering. You don't dismiss all this, all the sadness. You don't dismiss suffering. You don't. But it's not okay to stay that way, and that's where faith comes into play. So if I believe that she is well and happy and riding horses with Jesus right now, then it's safe for me to come out of my self-protective shell and have joy. And that's faith for me. Like, joy is a manifestation of my faith. My joy says, you know what? That hurts so bad. But she's okay. And I believe that when Jesus said, I'm going to wipe away every tear from your eye. I believe that. I'm alive. And even though part of me has died, you take this heart and breathe it back to life. What do you believe about Jesus Christ? Do you believe that he's God's son, that he died on a cross to save you from your sins and give you a life with God in heaven? Do you believe he's powerful enough to wipe away every tear, to take away all of your pain? To each one of those questions, the Bible says, yes, he is. And we would love to tell you more. You'll find it at findpeacewithgod.net. Again, website is findpeacewithgod.net. So the name Daisy Love, it's a unique one. And in just a minute, Kate Merrick is going to tell us how she and her husband came up with it. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Why do Christians suffer? Billy Graham, 1953. The Bible teaches that afflictions are God's appointments for his children. This world is not a place of bliss for the Christians, for Jesus reminded us that while in this world we would have tribulation, you can be sick to the glory of God. The Bible teaches that a Christian can even die to the glory of God. Death for a Christian should actually be a time of rejoicing for those that are left behind because there is the confident assurance that they have gone into the presence of Christ. Though there's an empty spot in our hearts, yet the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. You suffering and afflicted Christians, take courage today. God is always with his people through thick and through thin. Jesus said, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Today, whatever your trouble, tragedy, or distress, I beg of you to trust God. It can be done by receiving Christ as your Savior and Lord now. And now, back to the hosts of GPS, Phil Fleischman and Jim Kirkland. As Billy Graham just said, hope and joy are possible, even when a loved one dies. Kate Merrick wrote about her experience dealing with that in her book, Still She Laughs, Defiant Joy in the Depths of Suffering. 
You know, we were curious, so we just had to ask Kate how she and her husband Britt came up with such a unique name for their daughter, Daisy Love. The great thing about having a kid is you get to name them whatever you want. I mean, if I wanted to name her ice cream cone, I could. <laughs> so um, it's funny because I just felt ever since I had my son Isaiah in my heart, I just knew, hey, I, I want a little girl one day named Daisy. And when it came to middle name, we were, you know, throwing around all these middle names. And then, you know, there's joy and there's hope and there's faith. And I thought, well, why not love? Why not love? And then Daisy love, that makes so much sense. That is a beautiful name. And it's a beautiful story shared by Kate Merrick on this episode of GPS. Thank you so much, Kate, for being with us. And we thank you for listening. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. Credit goes to Mercy Me and Chris and Conrad for the music you heard on this episode of GPS. You know, you can catch us on several podcast platforms, including the Billy Graham app and iHeartRadio now, too. We post a new episode every Wednesday. GPS, God, People Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. What if I were the one to tell?